Hello and welcome. My name is Amanda and this is my channel, Her Pacific Northwest Washington Life. And today I wanted to tell you all about the readathons and reading challenges and activities that I am going to be participating in during the month of December. I have three month long readathons that I'm going to be doing, as well as four one week to two week ish long readathons that I'm going to be participating in as well. So I'm going to split up this video in between the different readathons. Um, I'm going to start with the month long readathons, which are the Reindeer Readathon, the Cloak and Dagger Christmas Readathon, and the Choose Your Own Holiday Adventure Readathon. And then I'm going to go into the different week long uh, readathons, basically in order of when they're going to happen during the month. So the four week long readathons are the Tis the Season a thon, the A oh What Fun Readathon, the Harry Potter and the Order of the Planners Yule Ball Readathon, and the Creating and Co New Books New Year New Books or New Books New Year <laughs> Readathon. Um, there's going to be a whole bunch of overlap with the books I choose for each readathon. Um, especially the month-long readathons and the weekly readathons, just because I can't read a whole TBR for each readathon throughout the month. I think the most books I've read in a month this year has been 17. I don't know, I don't remember off the top of my head how many books I have picked out, but um, it's somewhere between probably like the 10 and 15 ish range. There's a couple other books at the end that I will tell you about that I would like to get to. If I have the time, these don't count towards any specific readathon, um, or if they do, I'll let you know what they go towards uh, as maybe like an extra. But if I can figure out the whole like timestamp thing, I'll do that. Um, if not, I'll try to remember in the comments or in the description box below to let you know where each different readathon starts. Just in the interest of keeping this video a little more manageable, a little shorter, I am just going to show you what book I'm going to be reading. I will also leave the Goodreads link down in the description box below for you all. That way I can get away with not giving a description. Um, these are all books that I have on my bookshelves. Um, so they're books I know a little bit about but would need to refresh myself on anyway in order to give a cohesive quick little snippet of what they're about. Um, and I like to go into my books just a little bit blind. So I don't typically like to read the synopsis again right before I read the book. So if you're interested at all in or finding out what these books are about, uh, you can click on the links down in the description box below and that'll take you straight to it. So without any more rambling, let's go ahead and get into the readathons. Alright, so the first readathon I want to chat with you about is the Reindeer Readathon. This is the second year that this is being hosted. It was created by my friend Eric at the channel Break Even Books, and he kindly created a fifth team so that I am allowed to join as a team leader. So the team I am going to be leading to victory this year is Team Candy Cane. I did an announcement video for this um, last Thursday is when it went up. And I will leave the link to that down in the description box below so that way you can kind of know more about the rules and things like that. But just quickly to get into what I'm reading, I'm going to tell you the prompt and the book I'm picking for it and move on from there. So the first prompt is Dasher. This is worth 15 points and it's to read a book with a one word title. For this, I am going to read Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore, hopefully with Eric. I am also using this book as my Christmas star bonus, which is to read a book over 500 pages. Next is Dancer, worth 10 points, and this is to read a companion novel or a sequel, as in a dancing partner. And for this, I am going to read Beyond a Reasonable Stout by Ellie Alexander, which is the... One, two third or fourth, third book, I think, in the Sloan Krause mystery series, which is set in Leavenworth, Washington, which is not too far from me. The third prompt is Prancer, and this is worth 15 points, and this is to read a book with a map in it. And for this, I am going to read Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rash. 
The fourth prompt is Vixen. This can either be worth 25 points or 20 points depending on which prompt you pick for this. So the 25 point prompt is to read a book with a fox on the cover and if you can't find a book with a fox on the cover for a slightly lower point value you can read a book with a strong female character or protagonist. I think it's just character. And for this, I am going to read Beyond the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston, which has a fox down there. The next prompt is Comet, and this is worth 10 points. And this is to read a book that you find intimidating. And for me, this might sound a little weird because it's a little teeny tiny book. Um, this is Let It Snow, which I believe was put together by John Green. I know he does have one of the stories in it, but there are three short stories in this, one by John Green, one by Maureen Johnson, and one by Lauren Miracle. And the reason I find this intimidating is that I don't like short stories. I don't like anthologies. I don't like um, just collections like this typically. So I find it intimidating because I I'm afraid that I'm not going to like this basically is what I'm getting at. So I've got that book slated for Comet. Then for Cupid, this is worth 10 points and this is to read a genre that you love. And for Cupid, I am going to read kind of an odd genre for me, um, but this is Journey Back to Christmas by Lee Duncan. And I primarily read fantasy and historical fiction. Those are two genres that I really love. But I also do love to get into um, a contemporary book, especially one that's set around the Christmas season or just the holidays in general. So I'm really looking forward to this one. It also is, um, it's a, it is a historical fiction. It takes place just after World War II ends. So we can still kind of get um, one of my main favorite genres in there. For the next prompt, we have Donner. This is worth 15 points, and this is a book with something hidden inside, whether it's under the cover um, or on the cover under the dust, dust jacket, a chapter heading, anything like that, any little sort of artwork. This could also be a map. Um, I have a friend who's interpreting this as a book with a recipe inside, which I think is a fun interpretation. But for this, I am going to read The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum. Um, this does have illustrations on the chapter headers, but it also has illustrations throughout, which I think is really beautiful, really fun. Um, this is just a sweet little book that I have not read yet but I have been wanting to. And I think I put it on my list every December and just never get around to it. <laughs> so this year is gonna be the year. For Blitzen, this is worth 20 points and it is to read a book with some sort of struggle, whether it's an internal struggle, a war, a battle, etc. And for this, I am going to read A Wedding in December by Sarah Morgan. The struggle in this is that there is, um, a girl who's dreading, no, her older sister's dreading her wedding. Um, but the bride-to-be loves her fiancé, but's having serious second thoughts. So there's an internal um, kind of mental emotional battle going on with the main character in this story. And the last prompt is Rudolph. This is worth 20 points, and this is to read a book with a main character who doesn't seem to fit in, is kind of an outsider or a misfit. And for this, I am going to read the group book, which is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, which I know is very popular seeming right now, um, especially for those fans of V.E. Schwab. I have not had very good luck with V.E. Schwab in the past. I've only read one of her middle grade books and two of her young adult books. So I'm hoping that um, her adult book will actually agree with me a little better but I've heard really good things about this and um, really looking forward to reading it and discussing with the group. There is one other bonus prompt which is called Slaying It and this is after you have completed all nine of the reindeer prompts, right? Nine? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yes, all nine of the reindeer prompts plus the um, Christmas star which is attached to one of those prompts. You can complete one prompt 
over again um, just for an extra 50 points. So I do plan to do the slaying it prompt, but I don't know exactly what I'm going to pick up. It's all going to kind of depend on what else I have managed to read and the time that I have left by the end of this. So that is everything for the Reindeer Readathon. The second month long readathon that I'm participating in is Cloak and Dagger Christmas. This has four different co hosts. We have Kate at the channel Kate Howe, Janelle at Too Fond of Books, Carolyn at Carolyn's Reading Rambles, and Kate at the novel Nomad. So, this is a mystery themed readathon that uh, this year specifically, the prompts are based around the board game Clue, which I've played a couple times. Um, I've got the Simpsons Clue game, and so I'm pretty familiar with it, but essentially all of the prompts are rooms in the house, like in the board game Clue, and you read a book that fits that prompt. So this one I'm still trying to iron out. I'm kind of new into the mystery realm. I'm trying to read a couple more cozy mysteries just because I think they're a lot of fun, but I don't own a lot and this one was kind of a last minute decision to participate in. My friend um, Rainy at the channel, Rainy Day Reads, suggested I do it because we do have two cozy mystery books to read together that she was like, oh they fit prompts for the readathon. So I just figured why not tack on another one because we don't already have enough going on in the month of December. But just to quickly go through the prompts, the first one is study, and this is to read a book associated with your profession, what you studied in college, or a field you'd like to learn about. Library is a book that references other books, or to borrow a book from the library. Hall is entry into a new-to-you mystery subgenre, or author, or series. That one should be easy for me because I haven't read a lot of cozy mysteries before or mysteries in general. Next one is Billiard Room and this is cue balls specifically. Um, this is to read the next numbered book in a series or a book that has a game or sport involved. For the conservatory you need to read a book with nature or travel or a warm climate in it. For the kitchen this is a cozy food based mystery or small town mystery where the kitchen is the heart of the home. Next is Dining Room, and this is a book with a close circle mystery, or a small group of people, a hotel, a dinner party, etc. Uh, the next room is Lounge, and this is Cocktails specifically. So this is to read a book written in or set during the uh, Golden Age, which is the 1920s through 1930s. And then the last room is Ballroom, and this is to read a book with a party in it. So the books or the prompts I have filled so far are the Billiard Room. Um, I'm going for the option of the next number in a series, which I'm going to plan to read Beyond a Reasonable Stout by Ellie Alexander for this, which, like I said in the Reindeer Readathon, is, um, I believe, the third book in the Sloan Cross Mystery series. And the other prompt I have filled is Kitchen, and for this I'm going to read Without a Brew, also by Ellie Alexander, which is the fourth book in the Sloan Cross Mystery series. I, If I have time, um, I would like to add on some books by London Lovett. I have the first two books. I'll put pictures up here because I don't recall exactly what they're called. I think one of them is Marigolds and Murders or something like that, and then... The other one is something about a firefly, but maybe not. Um, so if I have time, I'm going to try and put those in because I think there are definitely new to you author. Um, I think there might even be like a warm climate or something like that. So definitely be able to slide those in. But also I would like to read some of the short stories um, within the Complete Sherlock Holmes Volume 1 collection by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. This is the um, Barnes & Noble paperback classic edition, so there are two volumes of this of these with all his works in it. So I would hopefully like to read some of these if possible because his short stories are not very long. But we'll see what I am able to get to. So there are three different levels of sleuth 
I guess, that you can achieve during this. You can become an amateur sleuth if you fill three prompts, a police detective if you uh, fulfill six prompts, or Sherlock Holmes if you fulfill nine. There's also the group read, which is The Birds by Daphne du Maurier, and there's going to be a group watch, um, which is Agatha and the Truth of the Murder, which I think is on Netflix. Um, the watch along for this is going to be held at um, December 12th at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which would be 5.15 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, um, or December 13th at 10.40 a.m. Australian Central Daylight Time. And then on top of that, there is also a scavenger hunt. So again, if you're familiar with the board game Clue, you know there is a weapon involved. So you get to tick these off for each item that's mentioned in the books that you read. Um, so for the scavenger hunt items, we have a candlestick, a revolver, a lead pipe, a monkey wrench, a dagger, and a rope. I'm really looking forward to this readathon because it's definitely outside of my comfort zone. And I think just the idea behind it, basing it around the board game clue is really fun. So I'm really looking forward to this one as well. The last month on readathon that I am planning to participate in is more of a challenge, not a readathon. It's a little adventure, but it is called the Create Your Own Holiday Adventure. And this was created by Tia over at the channel, Tia and all the books. I moved over slightly so that I can put the card um, on the screen so that you can kind of follow along a little better as I talk through things. So there are four different pathways you can choose. You can do holiday romance, holiday homebody, holiday animal party, or kid at heart. And I was debating between holiday homebody and kid at heart for this. So I am going to pick Holiday Homebody first, and if I have time, go back and do Kid at Heart. So there's essentially four different um, Christmas song titles that are prompts for each of the pathways. So for Holiday Homebody, the first one is White Christmas, and this is to read a book with a white cover. This one is a little more off-white, kind of gray, kind of like a dirty white, but it works for me. And that is Among the Beasts and Birds by Ashley Poston. The next song is um, Someday at Christmas. And this is to read a book that gives you hope for humanity. And for that, I am going to read The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum, just because this is middle grade. And it kind of starts um, from youth and works its way up to... Um, I don't know, probably like teenage and then old age and stuff like that. And I think it'll just be a really sweet book to read. The next song is I'll Be Home for Christmas, which is one of my favorites. And this is to read a book set in a small town. So another time where I get to double up across readathons. And for this, I am going to read Beyond a Reasonable Stout by Ellie Alexander. And then the last prompt is Grandma Got Run Over by a Reindeer. And for this, it's to read a book with a main character who's over the age of 30. So for this I'm going to read Without a Brew by Ellie Alexander because our main character Sloane is probably, I, it doesn't say her age specifically, but I know she is at least over the age of 30 because she has a son who is 14, 15 years old and um, I know she was working before getting married and stuff like that. So she was out of high school and things like that. So she's definitely over the age of 30. But that's it for uh, the Create Your Own Holiday Adventure Readathon um, or Reading Challenge. I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's going to be really cute. And I do hope that I'm able to do the Kid at Heart path as well. So getting into the first of the week-long or two-week-long readathons, basically the readathons that don't span the entire month, is the Tis the Season-a-thon. And this runs from November 30th through to December 6th and was created by Heather at the channel Bookables. This has a bingo board, which I'll insert on this screen as well. And I don't have a real plan of attack for this. I'm just going to kind of go through um, each row and tell you what the prompts are. 
and not quite say what books I'm picking to fit the prompts because I am definitely going to be doubling up and maybe tripling up where I can. <clears throat> and this is just kind of whatever book fits for this readathon that I have planned to read throughout the rest of the month that I can fit into the first week of the month because I have to be strategic in my planning of what books I'm going to read when. So these are basically the books that don't fit the other week-long readathons and just kind of are going to be put to use for Tis the Season-a-thon. <laughs> so the first row is to read a holiday-themed book to read the group book, which is In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, to read a book with green or red on the cover, to read in front of the fire, um, whether you have a fireplace or you just put on like the Yule log fire on the TV or like a YouTube video or what have you. And the last is to make a gingerbread house. The one thing I really like about this readathon, um, this board specifically, is that you have a combination of reading prompts and then other kind of like Christmas holiday time prompts as well, which makes it really fun. The second row is to watch a holiday movie, um, read a book with family or a found family, bake your favorite holiday treat. Um, a book with a holiday word in the title, and to read a book you meant to read this year but didn't. Then the third row, uh, we have read a book someone else recommends, read a Christmas classic, the free space, read a diverse book, and a buddy read a book with someone. Then for the fourth row, we have books with or a book with lights on the cover, a book you received as a gift, read your favorite genre, read the 25th book on your TBR shelf, read a book with romance in it, and then the last and final row is to read a short book with 250 pages or less, read a cozy read, read a new to you author, make a book snowman, and a read a book with snow on the cover. So for this readathon, the books that I have slated essentially for this week are Journey Back to Christmas by Lee Duncan. I also have The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. There's also One Day in December by Josie Silver, which I think I have on my Kindle, but maybe I haven't purchased it yet, so maybe not. But it's a book that I heard about last year that I really want to read this year. Um, also, I would like to get to In a Holidays by Christina Lauren, which is the group book for this readathon. And then the two final books in the Sloan Cross series, which are uh, Beyond a Reasonable Stout and Without a Brew by Ellie Alexander. Next on the list is the A What Fun Readathon, which was created by Mackenzie at Mackenzie Lane. And this is the almost two week long readathon, which runs from the 12th of December to the 23rd of December. And this one is really fun. Um, there are prompts under the nice category and under the naughty category. And what I did last year was I wrote the prompts on a mug on paper and put them in a mug so that I could draw those out and it, basically the higher number of naughty versus nice prompts I got that's what I was for that year. I think I ended up being nice. I always strive to be nice. Um, this year I'm not 100% sure that's going to work just because of how I have to plan out and structure my reading. So I was thinking that maybe instead I would write um, like do the nice in green pen and the naughty in red pen or something like that and then write audiobook physical book ebook on different pieces of paper so that way um rather than being stuck to whatever prompt i pull i could read the an audiobook um for one of the prompts under each of the categories if that makes sense that way i have just a tiny bit more flexibility and i can work this um to be the most beneficial and useful of my time. We'll see though, um, I might change things, I don't know yet, but 
just to go through the prompts really quickly, under nice, um, the first prompt is to read or sing along to a Christmas hymn. This one is very easy to complete. Um, I don't sing very well, but I do play the violin and I think this could kind of work for the prompt as well if I play a Christmas hymn. Um, it'll probably be Silent Night because that is my absolute favorite Christmas song of all time. I think it's just absolutely beautiful. So maybe I'll play my violin to that or obnoxiously sing Silent Night. <laughs> I think my husband would probably prefer if I played the violin. So that's probably what I'll do. The next prompt is to read a book by a ghost of pre Christmas present. And this is just an author who is still living and with us. For um, Christmas present, I was going to read Bitter Blue by Kristen Kishore, which is the last book in the Gracing Rome series. No, it's not because I just found out that there's a fourth book. Never mind what I just said. It's the third book in the series. The next prompt is to read a book set in your ideal winter vacation destination. And I'll be honest, I don't really have an ideal winter vacation destination. I don't have any vacation destination that I feel like, oh, I need to visit during this time or this time. When I travel, I travel as inexpensively as possible. So I usually travel during the shoulder seasons um, when prices are a little cheaper. So that typically ends up being, um, kind of the winter, spring, and then fall, winter times. But I thought that it might be fun to visit Colorado during the winter. So for this, I have planned to read A Wedding in December, which takes place, I want to say it's in Denver, but I could be wrong. But Skylar, um, recently took a road trip, um, down through Utah and Colorado in June and he absolutely fell in love with Breckenridge specifically. So I think it would be really fun to visit. Um, I know there's obviously a lot of, um, ski resorts and things like that, uh, which I don't, I've tried snowboarding once. It was an absolute failure. I might try skiing, but I much prefer the inner tube. So I think it'd be fun to vacation somewhere that gets lots of snow, um, just has gorgeous mountains and scenery and stay at like a nice lodge and inner tube and freeze my butt off. <laughs> so that's definitely my pick. The next prompt is to read a book in one day. And I can already tell you that this is not going to happen unless it's a short, like eight hour contemporary book that I can listen to on two times speed while I'm working. I'm not going to finish a book in a day, but the book that I have slated for this, because I think it is somewhere around the nine hour mark is the, um, is sorry, Mr. Dickens and his Carol. I can't recall who the author is, so I will obviously put a picture up, but this one I wanted to read last year and never got around to. Um, Charles Dickens is one of my favorite authors. Um, my favorite book of all time is Great Expectations by Charles Dickens. And I am quite familiar with A Christmas Carol and just the different retellings of that. So this one, I believe, follows Charles Dickens as he's getting visited by the ghosts of past, present, and future and things like that. So I thought that would be really neat and interesting to read. And then the last prompt under the nice category is to read a middle grade holiday book. And for this, I have planned to read The Life and Adventures of Santa Claus by L. Frank Baum. So getting into naughty, which I do not want to be. <laughs> I always strive to be a nice kid and make it on Santa's nice list. But the first book or the first prompt is to uh, stay up all night reading, which again, I can tell you is not going to happen. I am a granny at heart. We go to bed, we get ready for bed at 715. And I'm usually asleep between nine and 10 o'clock. There's absolutely no way I'm going to stay up all night reading. So I don't have a book picked for this prompt. But if there's a night that I can make it till midnight or something, I might fill that in there. The next prompt is to read a book by a ghost of Christmas past. And this is obviously uh, to read a book by an author who is no longer with us. 
And for this, speaking of Charles Dickens, I would like to read The Chimes. This is a bind up, I guess, of the three Christmas stories that Charles Dickens wrote. We have A Christmas Carol, which I've already read, um, The Chimes, and The Cricket on the Hearth, which you'll see pop up here in just a minute. The next prompt is to read a book set in your ideal summer vacation destination and for this I would like to read The Christmas Sisters which I know is set in Scotland. I think it might be set in the Highlands in Scotland but I'm not 100% sure and um, Scotland is just always an ideal vacation destination for me. I was supposed to go in May and obviously that got cancelled <laughs> so I will live vicariously through a work of fiction. The next prompt is to read a non-holiday wintry book. So this is a book that takes place during winter that isn't centered around any of the um, December holidays, basically. For this, it's a little bit of a stretch, I guess, kind of. I don't know. It fits for me, but it is Snow Like Ashes by Sarah Rash, which takes place. There are different kingdoms. And this takes place in the kingdom of winter, which I think fits the prompt perfectly. And the final prompt is to read a book with fewer than 200 pages. And for that, I am going to read The Cricket on the Hearth by Charles Dickens. So definitely looking forward to doing this readathon again. I think I've participated in every year that it has been a thing. I just need to kind of iron out how I want it to work this year. Um, hopefully I can do all of the prompts minus the all-nighter <laughs> and make it on the nice list, but we'll find out during my weekly reading vlogs. The next slightly longer than a week <laughs> readathon that I am planning to participate in is the Harry Potter and the Order of the Planners Flourish and Blots Yule Ball Readathon. This is the second annual Yule Ball Readathon. I did participate in last year's as well, and I think this one is just so much fun. Um, I would love to attend the Yule Ball, even though I know that's not a real thing, but I mean, honestly, I'd be happy to attend any ball. But this one has five reading prompts. Um, and it spans 10 days. So it does go from the 21st of December through to the very end, the last day, the 31st of December. And this one, I'm still working out two prompts. Um, it's kind of, kind of depend, depend again on timing and what I am able to pick up during this week. Um, so for the first prompt, uh, this is basically set up like an invitation. So who is all witches and wizards? And this is to read a book with a diverse set of characters. I am sure I have books that fit that. Um, but again, I don't know what I'll be picking up that week. So I'm just going to kind of fit in a book where I can. I don't have anything specific picked for this. What is the Yule Ball? And this is to read a book with a white cover. So guess what I'm going to pick? Shocker! Um, I'm going to pick Among the Beasts and Briars by Ashley Poston, which I'm also using as white cover for another readathon. For when, like I said, this goes from December 21st through 31st, and this is to read a book to finish a challenge. Any book I pick up is going to finish a challenge because um, it can finish this challenge. It can finish um, one of the three month long readathons I'm participating in. So again, whatever I have time for, I'm going to fit in there. Where is the Hogwarts castle? And this is to read a book set in a foreign land. And for this, I am going fantasy foreign and not just foreign to me, um, which would be anything outside of the U S or Washington state. And for this, I'm going to read snow like ashes by Sarah rash. And why is to celebrate the Triwizard Tournament, and this is to read a book with a tournament in it. And for this, I am planning to read Well Played by Jen DeLuca, which takes place at a Renaissance fair. And there are definitely tournaments and things like that um, at the fair that the um, fair goers get to watch, and also the cast, is that what they're called, get to act in. So 
really looking forward to reading the second book in the Well Met series. We are at the finish line now for the final readathon that I will be participating in during the month of December. But this one actually does run from December 28th into January 3rd, so we do go into 2021 with this. But it is the New Year and New Books readathon, which was created by Paige over at the channel Paige Nicole. She is also a planner sticker shop owner that has a lot of bookish items because Paige herself is a very big reader. And um, we do week-long readathons every other month in her Creating and Co. Media and Books Facebook group. Um, it just got a name change, so I'm still trying to figure out how to say that without stumbling over it. But basically within the group, uh, we, like I said, participate in a readathon every other month. Um, there's also yearly reading challenges she had this year and into 2021 there's going to be a year-long reading challenge that has 24 prompts in it as well as seasonal challenges which i think are going to have 15 prompts over three months and a lot of other fun things um within that group you can vote on the group book for the readathon and just kind of help page um decide what to bring to our shop um, if there's things that you specifically enjoy and want to see. So I have been a part of this group now for three years, I want to say, and I really, really enjoy it. So I do have a link to the group in the uh, where to find me section of the description box down below if you would like to join. But the final readathon we are doing for the month of, or not the month, but the whole year of 2020, is a New Year's inspired readathon. So there are five reading prompts and the first reading prompt as always is the group read. This is still to be determined because um, Paige hasn't yet put up the poll for the group read. We usually vote a couple weeks in advance of about a month or so in advance of the readathon and I think because she's prepping for Black Friday, she hasn't put up the poll just yet. But the last couple of readathons we've been doing have had two group reads. So I kind of have a feeling that's the way that this is going to go as well. So it'll be interesting to see what the group picks. And again, if you want to be part of picking that, um, you can go ahead and join the group. The next prompt is Gilded, and this is to read a book with a foiled cover or metallic on the cover. And for this, I'm going with Metallic and reading Let It Snow, which is the three short story anthologies, one by John Green, one by Maureen Johnson, and one by Lauren Miracle. The next prompt is to read a book set in the 20s. This does not have to be the 1920s. It could be the 2020s. It could be the 1820s. It could be the 3020s. Whatever you want, just set in the 20s of some decade. And not decade. Century? Maybe. But for that, I am going with the 1920s by reading The Diviners by Libba Bray. The next prompt is to read a book related to the number 20. Um, this was one of the challenges for this year, and you can interpret it by either reading a book, again, set in the 20s. Um, maybe it has 20 in the title. Maybe the character is 20. Um, things like that, or it, was, it could have been written in 2020 or 1920 or however you want to interpret it some way related to the number 20 and then the last prompt is last hurrah and this is the last book read in 2020 so I don't have anything planned for this prompt yet I also don't have anything planned for related to the number 20 um, I might double up this time it all just kind of depends on what the last book I finish in 2020 is and if I can squeeze anything in that is also related to the number 20, um, the diviners would work for that prompt as well because it is set in the 1920s. But I'm not 100% certain on this. So we'll see what I end up picking up. So those are all the readathons and reading challenges that I plan to participate in during the month of December. 
it is a very very full plate but the good thing is um, pretty much all of these books overlap between at least one other readathon so really I'm not looking at reading too too many books for the month of December the hardest part is going to be coordinating what week I can pick up which book because um, each of these readathons runs for a different amount of time uh, they may overlap only a couple days, things like that. So I'm going to have to be very strategic in what I pick up, but I would love to know if you're planning on participating in any of these readathons, any of these reading challenges, if there are different ones in December that you're planning on participating in. I would love to know that even though I am maxed out. I cannot participate in any more, but I just always love to hear what's going on. Um, I love readathons if you cannot tell so I like to hear about the other ones that people participate in. I would also love to know if you've read any of these books or if you're planning on reading any of these books and what your thoughts are on them and just a whole slew of things so if you feel so inclined please do let me know your thoughts your comments down in the description box the comments not the description uh, the comments below and I will chat with you there until my next video bye